horror movie fans, welcome to the Cold and Trash Horror Movie Grinding Podcast. I am your host, Ian. This is the show in which we grind on the absolute worst horror and sci-fi movies we can find and make fun of just how bad they are, as well as praise the good cool classics that have been lost throughout time. Now get ready because we're about to dive real deep inside of Hollywood's dumpster in search of the good, the so bad it's good, and the fucking ugly. Now put on your seatbelt, grab a beer or two, and enjoy the show. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Cold and Trash Horror Movie Grind, or this month, another episode of Grind Vember, where all month we are covering all Grindhouse movies all month. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, the first couple of weeks of November, we started doing a bunch of Grindhouse films, starting with Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror. Um, and then last week, we did Hobo with a Shotgun. And I call those Neo Grindhouse because those came out as tributes to Grindhouse and spawned a new genre of Grindhouse. Uh, go, go back to those episodes. You'll hear me talk a lot more about it. Uh, but uh, this week, we're, we're going into the, the classics, uh, the cult classics, the, the actual real Grindhouse films, uh, starting with uh oh one of my favorite genres which is black exploitation uh from the 70s it's it's a lot of fun it, it's um a, a lot of just i don't know it, it's it's a lot of fun but uh anyway we're we're starting with uh one there's not a whole lot of horror black exploitation but um th- i found one is blackula it it's it's definitely if you listen to the intro, uh, we're we talking about the good, the the bad, the so bad is good. This is definitely so bad is good, and we're definitely making fun of how bad this movie is in so many ways. Uh, this is came out in 1972, directed by William Crane, starring William Marshall. Uh, you probably don't know who he is because he hasn't been in a whole lot of movies. But this one in particular, before this, he did a lot of theater. He is a theatrical actor, and he's almost in a whole other movie because he's acting his ass off while everybody else who had anything to do with this movie like failed horribly. But uh, anyway, uh, let, let me let me bring a couple people in uh, to to make fun of this with. We got Daniel. What's up? Hey there. What? Um, I I, I want to start this episode with saying that you cannot spell black exploitation without exploitation. Oh, and I thought you were about to absolutely... say blackula. You can't, <laughs> you can't spell black exploitation without blackula. I'm pretty sure you could, but you can't spell it without black, and you can't spell it without exploitation. And I think it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty noteworthy in this movie that this entire genre is made for the so bad as good sort of movie. And you're right, there are very few horror movies that really touch on this. There's Blackenstein uh, and a a small handful of others. I think that there's a uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde uh, version of that. Yeah, directed by the same guy who did Blackula, by the way. Yeah, it's uh, Dr. Black and and Mr. Hyde. It's... um, it's an, an odd crossing of genres, and uh, I think that one of the, the craziest things when we look into this sort of genre is trying trying your best to to get your enjoyment out of it, knowing that it's from a bygone era. So yes. um, while the the jokes and the stereotypes absolutely do not always fall, there is absolutely a sense of humor to be had with uh, you know watching a movie like this where people will just push forward that 70s agenda of, hey, if it's black, it sells. And that's what they were going for. They yeah, be- because to, these movies started out as yeah. uh, films for black audiences by black f- filmmakers. And uh, there, it's still going on. It's, it's actually, it's not like a thing that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we, we, like it, 
it got restarted in the 90s and then today like jordan peele is very much so still doing black exploitation he is absolutely making it a you know modern day sensitive though you'll yeah, watch back very much like this it is very dated there's large portions of it that you're gonna be upset about and that's okay and there's large portions of it that you can take enjoyment out of it and that's okay too <laughs> yeah uh before we get more into that we still have uh, another friend here and uh he would go by the name of ian kula <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> It's nice. Right. Uh, I, I, man, you tried for this one, but uh, you, you tried almost because every episode you're on, you, you like to have a pun with your name in there. Yeah, and oh, uh, I did. You, I didn't you, try at all with this one. That's the point. You, you tried <laughs> just as hard as Dracula himself tried with naming uh, our protagonist in this one. <laughs> oh um, yeah, he, do, he does name him, doesn't he? Yeah, I ha- actually have that clip right here. So let's just, let's just jump right into oh, it. Oh, can we see it? Just for okay. context, because out, out of context, that looks like what, who, uh, what, but with context, so it's 1780 and Prince uh, Mama Walde, uh, who I don't think they ever say what country he's from, but he, uh, Africa. An African prince. He's, yeah, yeah. Pra- pra- okay, yeah, there you go, 1972. No, that's that's, that's a country of Africa, yeah, <laughs> there you go. So he shows up in Transylvania to try to get the Count uh, Dracula's help with uh, with uh, ending the slave trade, which. Personally, I think if, if he had if he'd accepted that, uh, if, he, if he'd accepted that, that would have made a much better movie. Uh, Dracula oh, and Prince been Mama so Walde cool. ending the slave trade. Watch, yeah, I would have loved to watch a 1970s movie about <laughs> Dracula and African prince just like fighting fools, killing them for slave trading. That would be pretty cool. Just like uh, yeah. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, uh, 1700s. Right. There well, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's the thing is that like so we we have the actual real Bram Stoker's Dracula, and he he's just like balls deep in, in the slave trade, <laughs> and, uh, and for and, reasons. And so he just calls over uh, a prince of a an African country, call, call, comes he comes over to his castle and they discuss it. And so, yeah, his name is Prince Mama Walde, I think. That's what I just said, yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't invited to the castle. Uh, oh, Mama he just Walde, shows up. Oh, Mama okay. Walde goes in an attempt to to get Dracula's uh, assistance to to yeah he, talk him into like, joining his side. We we need to end the slave trade because this is awful. Turn, uh, and turns then out Dracula, Dracula's turns out he's it. he's just racist as fuck. And yep. he was just like, you know what? I'm kind of really the myself. whitest of all of us. That's that's <laughs> what happens, I guess, when you change somebody out their blood. More racism. That's terrible. But but hey, let's get <laughs> let's get one thing. Himself. Let's get one thing straight though, because uh, earlier y'all were talking about how this is like a, a movie that's so bad and it's good. But this movie uh, made over a million dollars. It was one of the highest grossing films of 1972. And and that acting we just saw, like you were you're mentioning earlier, these guys are like stage actors. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and they're giving well, stage actor him, really well. I guess Dracula was Dracula was. looked to me like he had some experience on the stage. Okay, yeah. So, so I, I think you know he was probably like this script is ridiculous, but that, okay. One thing that surprised me about this movie <laughs> is how how surprisingly uh, uh, good it was. Like it not and not a so bad it's good way, but parts of it were like well done and had me feeling stuff. You so, know? Some of it is a lot of it, of it isn't. And it's kind of just merged together in one thing. And we'll get into it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So, it turns out Dracula is just a fucking shitty racist. <laughs> and, he, and not only that, but he's like, he sits him down and gives him some cognac. And, um, and he's just like, you know what? I, I kinda, I'm kind of really digging my slaves. I, I think I'll, I'll continue. And, and Prince Mama Wanda is just like, what? And not only that, but uh, like your your wife is just he calls her delicious, and, and at which point Baba Walde is like, I'm about to just cut, kill this motherfucker right here. <laughs> uh, but he he's so classy about it, and he's like, Sir, 
I've decided that your your brandy is as good as what was he say as good as your. Uh, uh, oh, that's a good quote too. Yeah, if only we could remember it. Uh, as, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's being rude, uh, and so and, and then Jack Killer is just like, you know what? Fuck you! I'm gonna turn you into a vampire, and they kill your wife, and then. And then we see the scene that we just saw where he's just like just spouting so much racism at him. And then the thing is, though, is like he's like, I'm gonna take away your name, take away your title. You're you're now a vampire, and you wait, your name will be uh, like he didn't think this through. He's just like, um, hmm, <laughs> something Acula. My name oh, is wait. Dracula, you're black. Black you. Jeremy. <laughs> and so he just goes to Black Killer, and then we see, um, he, like, in his sleep, he's like, oh, this motherfucker. <laughs> so this this one of those scenes that hit me a little bit hard on, like, uh, a lot of the things that I've seen as far as, like, trying to, trying to understand slave trade and trying to understand all the, the shit that uh that people had gone through uh during periods like the 1700s and later um was where people's titles and names and entire existence was taken away from them and that i think was one of those it, it just like it just struck me at this whole different like i this topic almost seems like it's striking and i know that we are in an exploitation movie and i know that it's uh a somewhat poorly made movie for a lot of reasons but i still felt like they really were hitting hard on exactly the points of what it was like to have your identity taken away from you uh it, by being a dracula uh in this case as opposed to being a slave but they start by talking about slaves and then they bring uh the draculas into it like okay this is how we're gonna set up our whole uh issue that everyone's having in the movie and i thought that was kind of interesting because they they really leave it on the floor there. This is the last that we have super deep thoughts, in my opinion, <laughs> in this movie. And it's really uh, well done in the beginning. And it's just like, then after that, it's like, oh, I'm a Dracula, bitches. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I, I, I might I, I might have some counterpoints to that later, but but I but I really like that point you made. That I, I didn't even realize that it's like a it's like uh, Prince Mama Walde is being enslaved by vampirism. Uh, Absolutely, I, I didn't he, even he loses, catch that. Yeah, he Man. loses his identity. He loses his uh, his name. Even he's not called the same name anymore. He's, there's lots of great movies out there that have that. Uh, not very many. What, so bad it's good movies. But uh, what year like did that. Roots come out? <laughs> Anybody know offhand? That's a good question. I'm not sure. No, I not years. Well, I'm not willing to look at my phone for that. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like this could my phone unless I have no idea what I'm talking about. And um, I, have I have no idea what your roots came out. So, well, but uh, uh <laughs> 1977, this definitely influenced roots, man. I don't think that's true. Well, w w what other uh depictions of the slave trade in cinema were, were, were being shown in 1972 or prior? All of them. <laughs> All right. I, I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> or, uh. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on. So, uh, let, let, let's get into like some more of the so bad as good. So, so that that's how it starts. I mean, basically, the whole thing really is so bad as good because, like, next we, uh, so Blackula. Which is not called Blackula throughout the rest of the movie. He's still Mama Walde. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Like that's the one and only time he's called that. And uh and then they titled the movie that because you know that that'll that'll sell seeds. Prince Mama Walde does not have the same <laughs> appeal to it. Um but uh yeah, so now he's in New York. Um and, and um and so he gets out, and then we have more prejudice. We have uh, two stereotypical, very stereotypical gay people. 
who uh, like hey 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 interior designers interior okay. designers yes they, they, they never so called them the seventies <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and yeah that's the Good. thing is that they're uh, they are referred to to the slur uh, the f word and uh, because after uh, Mama Wande like drains them of their blood and like leaves them there and kills them the cops come and they're like oh this is a couple of blank uh and and so and then you you hear that like you're watching this for the first time and you hear that you're like whoa did he just say what i thought he said (laughs) it's like damn they're really and they say it like a couple more times later on in the movie and it's like damn they're really just comfortable with that and that (laughs) i swear this movie is definitely suffers from the period from the this came out in 1972 and uh and back then that that was like kind of a normal thing uh which i'm glad that we've definitely very much progressed through but um however as hateful as that is and how not okay that is uh i do appreciate it this movie for for putting um not only uh gay people in this but uh, uh interracial couple gay couple in here which was not seen at the hey. time so in a way it's hey, every, kind of uh, being progressive hey every this homophobic those... every homophobic cloud has a silver lining i guess you know this yeah thing. because this is one of those they... crazy things that does happen in exploitation movies though is that they will break into something that is considered not okay and that is based very much on the period and not based on a uh, progression of culture. And they don't, they're not afraid to show something like, Oh, we've got a gay interracial couple here. Like, Ooh, yeah. did they do anything wrong? No, they were living their lives. They got killed by a guy. Yeah, they were, they were oh, fine. and everyone hated on them because they were gay. Yeah. That's pretty much what happened. Well, I, it, it's not even that they, they weren't being like people weren't, being uh i guess prejudiced towards them there, there weren't the only, only thing bad happened is that a vampire came and sucked their blood yeah. uh w- when uh the cops referred to them by that slur he's not even being hateful about it it's like yeah that's just what they are and uh mm-hmm. which was kind of normal at the time so it was just like now for for us and a much more progressive society it, it, it sounds really fucked up but like at the time, there were just, it was just like I guess it was kind of normal. I don't know. I, hey man, I, I should the, probably in, shut up. No, no. In, in <laughs> the seventies, in the seventies, outside of a, of a few like main locations, uh, and 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 then small underground communities throughout the country, homophobia was the standard. And then yep. going yeah. deviating from that was 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 not the norm. And then by the time you get to the nineties, we we got to the point of you know, but there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and, and it's. Oh, like Seinfeld. Than... Yeah, yeah. So you could oh, you yeah. could see a popular culture progression in the acceptance of uh-huh. of gay people. Yeah, th- this was acceptance of just like they exist, which you yeah, don't th- see was, in a lot yeah. of seventies films. This is fifty years ago, if you want to think about it, in like a hard time uh, as far as feeling old. But like this movie happened literally fifty years ago, and people weren't okay with that sort of thing. So that's that's something that's interesting about the way that exploitation movies happen is Mm -hmm. they oftentimes go into these subjects that you don't you don't do in that era and uh as much as we try to recapture the essence of that it's it's usually lost because you've got you know newer and more accepting actors and you got newer and more accepting crowds but back then that was shocking and and crazy for people to do and that's something to appreciate too in this movie is that they had absolutely no problem with being shocking or being, uh, you know, crazy about uh, how they referred to people or, or how um, how their roles were in the movies. So that's pretty neat. Right uh, now, back to to the whole black exploitation thing. This is a black exploitation. I mean, it, it's it's like in one ways it, it's kind of what uh, other Ian was saying is that the, they're trying to. I guess be uh, what? What were you saying? You, you were saying that this <laughs> being like kind of 
which was which specific part of what I said? I like they're trying to like kind of teach a lesson, kind of in a way. And oh well, it's a. I mean, it's a. Uh, you're you talking about how there's the allegory in the, in the yeah. beginning scene. Or, yeah, or there, there's yeah, all yeah. that, but also. Oh, oh, well, well, okay. There's, there's a, there is an underlying theme of, uh, of social injustice, right? And you find that a yes. lot in, in black exploitation film, where the, the, oh, yeah, the, the black man or the black woman becomes the, the hero, and, and I'm sure to a lot of people in the, yeah, at that, that time that, that was like a cool thing to see. Popular back then. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you're used this to going. Is, this is the beginning of that. There, there's a movie we, we've definitely talked about it in a couple of other episodes. Uh, kind of recently, but there's another movie called Boss, and it's actually two words: it's Boss and then the N word, and uh, w- starring Fred Williamson, and like the N word is in the title of the movie, and Amen. but he yeah. is he goes into this old western. It's a it's a western, and he goes into this town. He's a f- newly freed slave, and he just cleans up, and he just kills all the racists, and he he's a total savior. And uh, and at that time, there weren't any movies like that. And he just like pretty much like they call him the N word because you know they're they're trying to like keep him down, but he rises above it and is like, you know what? Like, call me that. I don't care. I'm still going to plus it had shock value, which overcome you. Yeah, true. That they want to get asses in seats. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. uh, I got a big question for you in this. Uh, this is actually the plot of a fair number of black exploitation movies. Does Blackula count to you guys as the hero of the movie? Do you well, like Blackula, not really. Or is he a bad guy? Uh, that, oh, that's oh, where no, this no, he's... comes. A, a, this is why it's a bad movie in general. Is because it's like. He still kills random people and feeds off of them, and they become mm-hmm. like well, that's the, monsters. That's the quintessential. White well, I well, hey, they call them. Hey, I mean nobody's perfect, and that that's the quintessential problem. Uh, you know, with 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 a lot of people, you know, good people can do bad things, and bad people can do good things, right? And I think this explores <laughs> that. I mean, they really tap into a lot of sympathy <laughs> for so. Prince Mama Walde, or was he a king? Is it King Mama Walde? He, no, he's a prince. Prince. So he had a father that he had a he had a living father that had to mourn his his uh, death. That, that's sad, man. Well, he see, probably uh, I don't know. He he just well, well he died eventually, but at, in 1780. Yeah, he <laughs> was like, oh, he went to go try to get help from that dude in Transylvania, and now we're still fucked. You know, he, he never showed back up. Yeah, but uh, but but Are yeah, you like, saying like, that there's not a, uh, a a a black mummy out there somewhere that was the king. Because well, I feel like King Mummy, King Black oh, Mummy would be. Man, the, what what if they did all the Universal Soldiers? Or I'm soldiers. ready. I'm ready God for our it. sequel. All uh, the Universal talk. Monsters. Hey, I'm, you know they did make Blackenstein, and I'm sure if it sold they did. better, that they that they might have made Black Mummy and uh, <laughs> whatever other creature from know. the Black Lagoon. Oh wait, no, that's already <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's creature, it's well, like in all caps. Mm-hmm. Creatures from the black. Yeah, there, <laughs> you know, there's, there, there's no way to add any more words to that 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 make it sound <laughs> that, that don't sound terrible. So, uh, but but yeah, I, I really do think that Prince Mama Walde is a sympathetic a sympathetic character. And, uh, yeah. Oh, he's absolutely sympathetic, know. but he but, is but that's a no the whole trope. Good guy. <laughs> that's the whole trope of well, Dracula. He's he's an anti-hero then. Something something like that, you know. I, he's or not even a hero by any means. He doesn't he, do he's shit. saving he's <laughs> saving Tina. You know what he's doing? He's saving Tina from mediocrity and uh <laughs> making her immortal. And you know you know who, who uh and we're skipping all the way to the end, but you know who you know who was not very nice? The the guy who killed Tina, who was uh her like father or cousin or or the cousin's friend or whatever, the 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 white dude that was with her father. I don't know. But, the, but <laughs> someone drove a stake through her, Tina's heart, and it wasn't Blackula, okay? They were trying to kill Blackula, though. That was They weren't trying to kill Tina. I remember yeah, I know, but you know, does intent matter when death is the, the consequence? Well, let, let's you know? actually, speaking of which, now if this is a major plot point, which is her, um, and, and also, like, probably the entire the dumbest the single dumbest thing of the entire movie so this is kind of uh almost a ripoff of bram stoker's dracula 
as far as the oh. story, the plot goes. Almost uh, even though Dracula is in this movie, but uh, if you're not aware, if anybody listening is not aware, uh, Dracula is he's he's a va- well before he becomes a vampire, he's in like I don't know what like uh, the 1400s, the 1300s, 1780, the year 1780. It says it in the first the first number on in shown on the movie. And Bram Stoker's Turner. Dracula. Oh no! I thought we were talking about Dracula. Uh, no, Black yeah, Bram there. Stoker's Dracula. It's like he, <laughs> he he's Vlad the Impaler, basically. Uh, he's, or he's based off of Vlad, and uh, he had a wife who thought that he died in battle, so she killed herself, and uh, in a, a very Romeo and Juliet kind of way. <laughs> and uh, and then he sees that, so he renounces God, and he becomes a vampire and he becomes Dracula and then he just chills in his castle just like ju- he he just like gives up on life basically he just hangs out in his castle for like 400 years then he finally decides to uh, purchase land in uh in England and the, the the guy who who comes to him uh his fiance looks just like his old wife and so he goes to to england and finds her and realizes that she is the reincarnation of his former wife and he tries to uh pretty much like he recognizes her he tries to get her to recognize him and it's a love story that way blackula does the same thing except for waiting hundreds of years he just wakes up after 200 years in another country and the first woman he sees, he recognizes as his, his former wife. Okay, and he sees her at the funeral. But but li- listen, what's the difference between those two scenarios? Uh, white Dracula chooses to stay in the castle. And like yeah. Daniel said earlier, he didn't have a choice in his vampirism. He, 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 was, and he was forced to be That's locked not, away. For no, I, yeah, I, I get that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the original story... He waits 400 years until finally she pops back up and he recognizes her. And Blackula, he he goes to sleep. He wakes up in another country 200 years later. And the first woman he sees is his wife. And that, my friend, is terrible script writing. It's also exploitation cinema. Like... Ah, we gotta move this plot along, man. We can't just yeah. drag here all day. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, lady, that, that's your wife. I don't and, know. That. And, she looks kind of like her. Go for it. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and, well, he he believes he, she that she's the reincarnation of of his wife, and and yeah. actually she's she's what the brother of one of the interior decorators that he murders early in the film. So there's already yeah. that duality of oh, I killed your brother, but also I'm in love with you. It's so you, coincidental. You know what I mean? It's like ridiculously coincidental. He sees her at the it funeral. He was trying to get the body. I think Ian's got a very good point on that. Like that that's really bad script writing. Like, that yeah, is so but, you know, bad. that's the best <laughs> and, 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 around for even a month inside of the city. Nah. Yeah. Literally yeah. brother of the, the guy. First place he goes, there she is. And then what? she runs away from him. What were the odds? Like very unlikely. And, and know, then it gets right? worse. Yeah. And then it gets worse because uh, he uh, that he takes her purse by accident. She runs away from him, and then he brings her purse back to him at at the club. He just goes oh. to the club, and then she's there. And then oh, fucking, she's like, oh, "Okay, time. thanks." And he's like, "Yeah, so I'm a vampire, and you are my old wife who died reincarnated." She's like, oh, "Okay, cool." Oh yeah, Literally well, vampires have that skill of just fucking smooth talking, dude. That is that, true. That's always that, been that, that, but, that is true. I will give but, you okay, that. But we she, can't gl- she was just like, okay. <laughs> we can't we can't gleam over something about this scene though. Uh, that that and, and I don't think it's something that any of us has mentioned yet. This is when I when I first realized this film has a fucking great soundtrack. Not just oh, like yeah. an okay funk soundtrack, but like they, so they got the Hugh Corporation Absolutely. playing yeah, and yeah. That, playing that's, almost a complete uh, run of 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 a uh, their song there he is again, and they're they're playing this song and it, it's just like a music video. It's sick, and this is before MTV. So. Yeah, this this is very very common in a lot of black exploitation flicks where uh yeah you got a dope soundtrack, and um, 
and, and then yeah, you see the entire performance. Uh, that you see that in Superfly, you got Curtis Mayfield doing the soundtrack, just an entire yeah. performance in the middle of the movie. Dolomite has that. Um, uh, the harder they come, the harder uh, they fall. Uh, Jimmy but, Cliff. Do they do that? Yeah, dude. Oh, that's classic. The harder okay. they come. Uh, they, come on, but uh, yeah, a, a bunch of black exploitation ha- had that where that it was it was very common where they would just have they would go into a club and then you just see the entire performance and and it jams too. Yeah, that's uh, a great uh, that's a great archetype. And, or, and or, then you know, throughout the film, device. yeah, and then throughout what's the really, what's really weird to me about that is that that's something that they like took off on on the 80s and i don't mean to get too off topic here this has nothing to do with horror movies it does nothing to do with um you know uh black exploitation but they they did steal that and they started doing that in the 80s with um uh hollywood blockbusters they wanted to have a lot of that going on there and I, they might have started earlier than that but i mean i can i can just envision seeing all these 80s movies where they would do a full performance with a uh, with a whole like talented band and all uh, that, yeah. they were just trying to make a music a video few. out of it. And I, I wonder if that started because it's it's neat that it happened in this particular movie because it doesn't really fit what this movie's about. <laughs> yeah, but but he keeps going back to the club. Where everybody keeps going back to the club. Every character <laughs> in this movie keeps meeting up at the club. Uh, and then you see the performance, and it's always the same band. <laughs> and, they have nothing better to do. Oh, oh, I guess and, and, it's but, just a house band because yeah, by the way, it's this, they had house bands. It's the same band playing different people's songs, right? So they got two guys and a girl mm-hmm. up front, and then and then a whole band behind them. Yeah, the soundtrack, the Hugh Corporation plays the first song, and then the the second song is is a different artist, and uh, but it's the same people singing it. So I don't know if that's okay. the Hugh Corporation. Or if the Hugh Corporation, that, yeah, or just some I guess, studio that's musician. just this movie because, like in Superfly, you have Curtis Mayfield doing the soundtrack. Yeah, that's Curtis Mayfield. Superfly. Yeah, that's Curtis. Uh, but uh, and uh, and and also you got the chase music. Every black exploitation like has the, who, who. It's always like one musical artist. Like in this one, you got this band. And uh, the Mac, you have Willie Hutch. Superfly, you have Curtis Mayfield. Uh, Sweet Streetbacks, Badass Song, you, you have um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And uh, it's always the same band, but they also there's all, also the Chase music. I think, which, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start collecting black exploitation vinyl, dude. <laughs> I, I I I really? mean I I didn't do vinyl, but I, I definitely when I I got really into black exploitation films a few years ago, and I that really got me into seventies soul music, and I I listen to that shit all the time now yeah, because yeah. because so, of these movies. So with uh with this being a horror movie, um I wanna I wanna ask you a couple of horror questions that uh that pertain to this. I wanna know what your favorite special effect is. And I want to know what you liked about the the deaths in this movie. I think they're two very different questions. Uh, I I personally have two very different answers to it. So I, I want to hear you guys first before I uh, tell you guys how I feel about it. But I thought there were some striking things about both the death scenes, and I have I have a reason that I I have a thing about them that I like the most. It doesn't have to be a specific death scene, but if there's one you've got that you like better than another, I want to hear about it. And um, your your special effects, what do you like about them? Um, I go don't. First, Ian? Or, yeah, okay. I that's just, a good answer, Ian. I just don't. don't. Tell me, what don't you like about <laughs> I think, them? I think that that's the weakest part of the whole movie is, is the deaths and, and the special effects. Like, like, you see him turn into a bat. and That was and my favorite special effect. That, that was, that was going to be my effect. favorite, dude. It's he turned into a bat. That special. was the one I went, whoa. Special about that. <laughs> Shut up, dude. It's 1972. <laughs> it's there, and this movie was made point. for like... That's a really budget? good point. This, this movie it was made was like $20,000 and it made a million dollars and he turned into a bat and they saved it till like an hour in or two or an hour and a half. It yeah. was like almost towards okay. the end of the movie. And he turned um, into a bat. I actually, I, I'm, I'm you go, oh shit, he could do that the whole time? I'm Why did you do that in the coffin? Why did exactly. you fly through? You know what I mean? I'm glad you said that because that uh, that brings me back to uh, earlier the chase music. 
Mm-hmm. He's actually running from the police. <laughs> he doesn't turn into a vet. He he chops from the police. Right, that right, can't right. run. So he can't and run actually, the um, I I yeah. have a clip from. Um, so that's what we're we're all thinking. Like, yeah, he turns into a bat, but he doesn't do it earlier. He runs from the police because you get the chase music. Uh, you have to have a chase scene with the chase music. Would it be so much uh, better if he was chasing a bat, a cop versus a bat. Yeah, but it, it doesn't work. But anyway, I have a uh, a clip uh, because I, I wanted to bring this up when you when you see him running from the cops. Uh, I didn't really think about it until I watched another. Uh, review podcast called Double Toasted. Are either of y'all familiar with that? Nope. I don't. I don't watch. I don't watch other podcasts. Nice. Yeah, okay. this is the podcast for me. <laughs> I only watch. I only watch infamous horror cult movie grind party. What What is this called? <laughs> cult movie horror party grind part two. Uh, Ooh, it's, it, it's a anyway, grind party. The sequel. Oh, the, yeah. There's a there's another uh, podcast called Double Toasted. In which they 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 fucking ripped on on Blackula. Uh, I I definitely recommend watching the whole thing. But I have one scene that is very particular to what we're talking about now, and they can say it a lot better than. All right, we all right. Can, wait, wait. So. Before you b- before you show this scene, before you show the scene, how many of their uh, ideas have you stolen already? <laughs> like one, <laughs> and this is it. I oh, mean, yeah, not yeah. really. But anyway, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with you. All right. Band- Pulls oh, out yeah. that horn and they start yeah. playing. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> man, it's man. Look, it, in the seventies, as a band, you weren't shit if you couldn't play a chase scene. That's right. No, that's true. That's in white movies too. They did that too. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially and, the detective shows. And mm-hmm. in the seventies, if the if the if the cops are remotely in your black exploitation movie. You gonna run from the cops if you black, even if you a black vampire. <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fly that away. fool ran out of a he ran out of a building from the cops. Blackula, the, the, <laughs> uh, the vampire, <laughs> superhuman. I'm a, oh, the cops were coming, forgot all his powers, yeah. and just started running. He remembered he was black. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good. Point. My Black powers Black. take time. Yeah. 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 He he ran. I hate to say, look, I don't want, to, I don't want to stereotype nobody, but Black and ran like he stole something. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. 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 this is bucket it. For the kitchen sink. All right, all right. the nerd in me, that brother the nerd in me, wants to say, uh, high Black Hill was from 1780. You don't know what a cop looks Heels like. Heels kicking, kicking up dust. <laughs> oh no, we'll we'll get into that in a minute. And it's funny because. That he was so scared of the police. He, he ran so fast and so quick, he forgot he could turn into a bat. <laughs> <laughs> he like you went faster this way. Man, fucking. this movie's an hour and 33 minutes. It took him an hour and 15 minutes where he's like, oh yeah, I can change it to a bat. I have yeah, a rather. I agree. I had that same thought. Parallel thinking. See, I didn't watch this episode, Why didn't you do that shit? That one? <laughs> you know, the pressure was getting to him. He's just like, just be so feminine. Yeah. That's he all heard, I know right he's, now. He's running on instinct. Yeah. What if that was, what was, that was the first time he yeah, When he heard the cops say freeze, he's that bat shit. Yeah. Hey, could, I, it is oh, the first yeah, time. Man. Yeah, let's take time to turn into a bat. I gotta get that. <laughs> right, but, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, what that what that, that time? is the first time <laughs> because Dracula. So yeah, here's the timetable. It's just Dracula turns him into a vampire, then puts him. Yeah, in but the he just doesn't know for two hundred years. Did he just go? Mm, he just like, wakes up two hundred years later, and he's in a new city with a whole new technology. And to the point that you made, he doesn't know the cops. He doesn't know what cars are. He. <laughs> He's used to carriages with horses. Oh, they really underplay <laughs> any element of whoa! It's the future. Like no, they would have been just more of that. Except right? everything immediately. He goes into a club and just like sits down, and they're like, "Yeah, get us so some champagne or whatever." He just starts ordering bottles with money that he doesn't have. <laughs> and he apparently and, learned about how to how to get money. 
how to order drinks, uh, how to have proper etiquette. It's like he good. doesn't. I assume he had to show ID to get in the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not and, 1972. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, he sees a cop car, just books it. <laughs> right. Like, oh, I don't like, know what that is, but it don't look good. <laughs> okay, and, uh, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, that, that that's an interesting uh point, man. Yeah, um, yeah. The entire I like I like, I, I like that podcast. Good. What's the name of that podcast? It's called Double Toasted. Um, Double Toasted. I, yeah. I appreciated their their perspective. They, on they make fun of a lot of bad horror movies, or not horror, just bad movies in general. It was so bad as kids genre. The one so. dude looked like he was there in the seventies. I like. I, <laughs> yeah. I just want somebody older than us to be like, yeah, that's what it was like, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I definitely yeah. recommend that episode, but also other movies that they do. Like, uh, th- they've got a really good dynamic and really good personality. Like, uh, it's hilarious. Ian, uh, when are you going to do that for us? What? Get a good dynamic and personalities. All <laughs> Man, we're, we're working on it. We're here watching other podcasts. They're great. <laughs> what about yeah. yours? Dude, get we're, out we're, of here we're probably going to YouTube copyright. No, no, no. I, I'm over here trying to talk over it so that we don't. <laughs> it's like, sorry if that seemed rude, but we can't, we can't just watch another podcast. We have to, like, commentate on it, right? Which isn't a word, but. We have to comment on it. Yeah, um, but it was good. It was good. I like. I like that. And it, and it did. Uh, it did uh, go back to the original point that brought all this on, which is that that bat scene is Im- impressionable, right? That's my favorite special effect in the movie. Not because it's hard to do or difficult or or impressive in 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 and of itself, but where it's placed and how it works and uh-huh. the, what the fuck moment. Now that is that is definitely a good completely. thing about this movie is that everything is well placed mm-hmm. like that that's where this movie does not suffer or uh, or we can't make fun of it for is that it's just like um it, it, he does the whole thing with dracula does that thing and then he meets his first victims then he meets another victim then he meets his girl and then hey, he convinces her and then and then people are after him hey, hey uh, going back man, to the club man, man. Going, yeah. going back, going back to the club, man. Uh, did you notice how he had to be invited to the her table? That's pretty good. There? I like right? that. Right, right. <laughs> I like they, on my list. They, they definitely have the vampire lord down. Uh, he yeah. follows a large amount of it, and I appreciate that. Like, it's just it's it's fun to see him playing Dracula. I I feel like he's not a good Dracula, but he's. A, <laughs> He's Why is he any good? It. What's what, you're like, saying? His acting black? isn't good. What is what's what's bad about his Dracula? No, I just feel like he's a little fast and loose with the rules. Like he's definitely <laughs> more comfortable than he should be in general. He, he just he knows everything. Like century. yeah, he, uh, because the, the movie has just does not care about like question about logic. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I and this is this is probably where that one to me crosses the line of so bad it's good it's like hey do you care to explain this no <laughs> no i do not <laughs> but where does he no just, just watch like don't ask no question but it doesn't it, it, there's like you you spend all this time we don't doing care these certain things <laughs> and it's like, Man, yes, but these hoops are over here and your questions honestly they're not they're not part of this this we're, we're doing the dracula lore the, yeah, the but answer what about all the it. other stuff no <laughs> The answer to every question you have is nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Are you entertained? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mostly. I'm pretty entertained. Okay. Well, yeah. Hey, hey, go back. Uh, uh, Siskel from Siskel and Ebert, he gave it four out of five stars uh, back when he was working for the Chicago Tribune. Is that and true? yeah, yeah, go look it up. And, and now, but critics were divided at the time uh, when this was released in 72, just like we're divided now. Because I, I legitimately think it's a good movie. And, uh, and and I know I know y'all. It just don't, has a lot of flaws. I respect y'all's opinion, but I'm but I'm saying in 1972 it, it grossed over a million dollars for with a budget. It's of entertaining as hell. Probably fifty thousand or something, and 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 it did have a split response from critics. There were other critics that also pointed to the fact that there was no sense being made, and I think y'all uh, that it doesn't. If like one of them said, another popular critic at the time said like. If you go to this movie expecting to see a, a movie about vampires that makes sense, that you will be sorely disappointed. 
That so, is probably so it's, inter- it's, it's, it's interesting <laughs> and, and cool that 50 years later, Daniel's over here giving the same response without ever knowing that that nope. guy's critique. Right. But but do we do that all the time still for the same movies? You know, um, I, I challenge you to look at just about any movie genre, any movie in general that you that you enjoy. And are there better versions of it? And are there worse versions of it? And you might find that you have the, the very best one in mind. But like, I guarantee to you that you guys have enjoyed other movie vampires less than Blackula. I think Blackula is pretty cool. And I I've been, have... I- I've been uh, just enjoyed whether or not I enjoy uh, Edward Cullen all that much more than Blackula. Oh, we're we're, we're leaving Twilight because, off the table right now, okay? I, I have mean, enjoyed. I haven't just enjoyed other that, vampires more than Blackula. I've enjoyed yeah. other black vampires more than Blackula, mm-hmm. and of course, I'm referring to the Daywalker, Wesley Snipes, Blade. Okay. Oh yeah, of course. Sure. You know, so black vampires aren't a new thing, even though this is this is the first time I've seen this movie. Right, and then you also have Vampire in Brooklyn with uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie oh, Murphy. That, that, How that's could I forget? Interesting, good, bad movie. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Honestly, I don't. I haven't that judged that one underneath. This. Blackula's yeah, good. I think that one's bad, bad. That one's bad, bad. But <laughs> so, see, there's the question. Then is were some of these critics looking at it and going like, you know what? Actually, there's a lot of flaws, but there's some good shit to watch here. And that's where I that's where I'm coming in with this. And I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go with this. Like this is black exploitation at its peak as far as well, as far as horror movies goes, it's the only one, but <laughs> or next to the only one, but uh, I like where they go with it and I like how they actually bring in the actors and the tropes and all these things to make a passable movie uh with relatively regular flaws. I think that these are the same flaws that happen in most of the black exploitation genre, most of the action genre, and frankly, most movies in general. So I don't think there's anything that's out of the ordinary there, but then there's enjoyment to be had out of it. So it pushes it up above that median line, maybe just a little bit more. Very well said. Yeah. Um, I also agree. Very well said. Uh what? Well, that covers black. I guess. Um, it's a whole movie. Yeah. Oh, no, there's there's much there's much more. Okay, when I'm talking about an underlying theme of of social justice, I'm referring to like the scene where uh, uh, Tina goes to investigate her brother's death, right? Uh, and goes to the police officers to uh, the police station, asking them what's going on, and uh, and and she makes a remark like. Oh, yeah, y- y'all don't do any work looking for black victims. But when it's a white victim, y'all y'all you'll go out and and, and are active mm. immediately and putting out flyers and stuff, right? Yeah. So I think that I mean, and that has rung all the stuff we're talking about that's antiquated, where we're like, oh yeah, but nobody would say that today, or oh yeah, that's you know seventy two crazy. That's one thing that's stayed persistent throughout the years is is, is that you know those those crimes aren't aren't. Uh, reviewed as often and if, you, if you're calling the cops from the wrong neighborhood they're not showing up i know i live in new orleans and that's the way it is if you're you know there's a yeah four hour we, we see the in uh, boys in the hood uh w- which is uh so like there's the 70s black exploitation movies this is what i was talking about earlier they didn't really go away they, they just evolved and in the early 90s you had these hood movies which were basically the same thing but they're more like hard dramas, like really gritty, and all all the fun, like all the flashy clothes and and just jamming soul music is all gone and it's replaced with like just seriousness. And I mean, I love Boys in the Hood, but um, that's exactly what happens in that movie: is that somebody burglarizes their house and they call the cops, and the cops show up like two hours later. And it's and they're just like, yeah, we don't care. We like they're straight up just like we don't care. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's the same. I mean, I completely hijacked the conversation. I'm not saying <laughs> making this yeah, at all yeah, the same did. point that you were making. Ian, but... Ian, you're, Ian, you're. I mean, I, I don't understand why you even do this, man. You 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 shouldn't even be a host, honestly. You're you're you're. you're... <laughs> The Ian you know, Shirt you're, show you're, starring you're, Ian and other Ian. Yeah, like yeah, you no know, man, you're, you're you're driving us off track. You're you're freaking, 
you're, you're freaking you, you know t- talking through through everybody else man you're over you're interrupting everyone okay i don't know if, if you realize this very different yeah. you know if you want yeah. to that 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 <laughs> I, it, it just i mean seriously dude like i you know Come on. I do like you know the evolution of the on. idea of an exploitation movie, though. Shut up. Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. All right. Sorry. What were you saying, Daniel? That the the was <laughs> directed towards you. Well, thank you for for removing Immaculate. I believe he was a little bit <laughs> too aggressive there. Um, <laughs> right. I, I, well, I'm Nobody sure comes on my show <laughs> and tells me I'm interrupting people, even though I just interrupted you just now. <laughs> I think I think that's a wrong movie, but I appreciate the way that it starts out there. <laughs> um, All right. All right, I got better. But... <laughs> oh, he is back! Look at that. We didn't say anything bad about you, Iniaclia. In 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 y- Y'all didn't say anything bad about me. That's How do cool. I say that name? So Yinkula. foreign and mysterious. Iniaclia. Oh, nice. Did, yeah. don't you remember? Don't you remember the book you never bought at the at the book fair, uh, Bunny Kula? I do you remember that. Yeah. Holy shit! Believe Damn. that he drained the color out of carrots, similar to Marceline, the vampire queen, uh, drains red out of foods. Are you saying that you, you you read Bunny Kula as a kid? <laughs> yeah, I did. Said? Man, I forgot. About I know that. About that is a blast from the past. Oh, Ian, you 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 read it? Yeah. Okay, I two out of three. We, but we all saw it at the book fair. Yeah. Oh yeah. But can I just say, Bunny Killa, Not as. Do you think the Do you think the director or do you think the the, the author of Bunny Killa, uh saw Blackula, and was like, but with bunnies? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I mean, Dracula was really popular. <laughs> yeah, but what else? Who else took who Who else took the dra out of Dracula and added another word in there? I guarantee you there's a list of top 10 Aculas that you could have uh, somewhere on the internet. There's Dragula. The, That's not, the that car, does not count. The car it's from car the that also sucks blood. Yes. It runs on blood as fool. Uh, van- the vampire motorcycle had to have had a cool name, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the. Oh, uh, yeah. I bought a, yeah, that, I bought a vampire early motorcycle. early episodes we did yeah. on the show. Yeah, I bought a vampire motorcycle. I forgot about that one. That was a fun one. That one was Definitely. a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so, so me I and Daniel that, that comes... and a couple, uh, Sloan and Johnny, we 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 did a movie called uh, "I Bought a Vampire Motorcycle," and it's about a motorcycle that's a vampire. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, I'm in. So I guess that that that's a good uh, leading point to a ridiculous question: is what thing that you haven't watched in a movie, read in a book, or really had like a deep discussion about do you really want to see become a vampire and why what thing do you want to be a vampire like like vampire blank like a mad lib but like it, absolutely mad, yes whatever it is i am a, now romantically involved with a vampire underline score now oh oh there's sex involved it could there could be it's a vampire of course there's sex involved yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh shit okay um ian you go first so the question was i you're, you're mad living your own vampire movie but it has to be with something that you haven't seen before something you want to see but you haven't seen but so make like your own object? vampire movie it's it like Okay. Oh, 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 vampire saving Private Ryan. <laughs> okay. That, okay. That's, that's, that's my choice. I want movies to that, but I would probably watch that particular movie. And I want a scene for scene remake of Saving Private Ryan, but with, with vampires interspersed, right? They've been doing that. Isn't there Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? That's a that's a thing. Oh, uh, like yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there, there, there's zombies that do where, that. Yeah. Where do they storm the so beaches can... of Normandy in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? No, but I'm saying, like, your your movie title might actually make a lot of money. I like oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're saying in that vein. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Freaking 
Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if we're, if we're gonna remake movies with vampires, then... yeah, just add vampire to your, to a good movie, like <laughs> the Shawshank Vampire Redemption. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, my <laughs> my best vampire's wedding, or my best friend's vampire <laughs> wedding. <laughs> That sounds great, though. That's uh, almost the point of um, what we do in the shadows, isn't it? Like, yeah, is, uh, yeah, four? yeah, yeah. Put four. Uh, put put oh, vampires oh, in, in casual. I, I thought you were talking uh, about the situation. What we do in the vamp? In the shadows. Oh no, that's 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 out of date now, Ian. You're uh, you're behind. There's I just, four I just show showed that. that movie to my fiance a couple days ago. <laughs> oh, dude, you're living you're living in 2015. I I, I envy you. Yeah, it's so 2000 late. Um. All right. Uh, how how about how about um, Father of the Vampire Bride? <laughs> I don't know why I'm going for these chick flicks. It's just so, so much funnier no. to me. <laughs> I I see personally for me. I think that vampire bees would be really fun. Vampire just bees. The idea that like killer bees are already really awful, but like <laughs> that sting you, but then you turn into a vampire, and maybe. It comes out of your butt instead, and then you have to sting them by putting your butt up against somebody. That just sounds like an awful wow. bad movie. For okay, me. okay. I would yeah, love yeah. to watch a monster movie. You go a lot of and it can happen to anything. So you could do that to you know a dog or to a rabbit or to a giraffe, and they'd still have to do the same thing. They'd be so a vampire to their butt. Now you're biting bunny color. If you're gonna do it on a rabbit, yeah, I'll be, uh, yeah, I guess yeah. That's, yeah. I'm not Watch trying to. I'm not uh, going to a particular route here. How, but. how about the Shawshank Vamp de- Redemption? <laughs> that's a that's a, a different way of saying what I said earlier, but I like it. Oh uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you're, you're one World War Two prison, prison uh, same shit. I'm not yeah, even dude. being sarcastic. It really is the same shit. Okay. So okay. okay. Uh, oh, Agent he's Cody. Bad. Agent Cody Banks, but he's a vampire. Okay. I'm and I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Vampires in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> it worked for Leprechaun. I, I'm barely <laughs> certain that they absolutely that worked for Leprechaun. <laughs> so here's a good question that you're you're gonna do a black exploitation horror movie, but you can't choose vampires. Uh what's your next best choice? Frankenstein, of course. No. <laughs> We've seen that movie. We've seen Blackenstein that exists. What one do you really want? I, I actually did just watch Blackenstein. I'll get I'll get I'll answer your question in just a second. I did uh just watch Blackenstein and that movie sucks. <laughs> It is not in any way like Blackula. Like Blackula yeah. definitely has its flaws. It's definitely a poorly made film with a heart of gold. And uh, but Blackenstein is absolutely in no way. Uh now, okay, so horror movie you want to see vampires in? or replace? No, I want to see black exploitation. Oh, black exploit, right, right, yeah. right. My bad. So we've yeah. got to we've got to take the 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 fun of doing something like Blackula. You, Taking a, a, a traditional style monster, and then you've got to make it into the exploitation genre through um, through the black exploitation genre. So, what do you what do you want to see? Well, you could do a zombie movie, but instead of traditional zombies, <laughs> it become uh, black people. <laughs> No, yeah, none of this works good. Dude. That doesn't sound no, good. No, it doesn't. None of, this, none of this works. This is a terrible question. We'll let you do I, a I, I was gonna on do, that one. Like, like I was going to do an Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and that doesn't work either. Like, we can't do, like, I don't know how you make it. <laughs> well, okay, no, you, you, t- you take a premise, and it's like 70s black actors, black filmmakers. With the think, traditional like band in the background. Daniel, I think I, I think before we started, you said Black Mummy. I think that that'd probably be the best one, like an African. No, I, mean, I would love that one. Yeah. Wait, wait, are all mummies African? So I want to go with the um. Yeah, Egyptian. Yeah. It, are... <laughs> <laughs> I think I introduced a horrifying topic. I'm gonna just switch yeah, it back good. to where I was going. So my idea for this was uh, Christine. 
Uh, but I wanted to be the pimped out <laughs> mobile from Superfly. <laughs> yeah. I wanted We're... to have the high rims. I wanted to have this. I oh wanted my God, to be Daniel, a that... little bit more like uh, Kit from um, Knight Rider, though. I wanted to be real that uh, Rider would be tight. and terrible and like. Are you saying the car? I wanted will... to be Knight Rider, but with sass. <laughs> so I feel like this would make a really entertaining movie because we've seen killer car movies for a while now. And I feel like the one thing that's missing from it is a real personality. And I think that if you threw in a um a great black actress, that you do great with it, you know. Like Pam uh, Summer starring Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, Pam Pam Greer. Uh, um, I'd I'd even be willing to give you know some of your um some of your I'm, I'm, more I'm with tough, it. Yeah, tough I'm, worded I'm uh, black um uh performance artist or something. Like I I would love to hear it voiced by Lizzo. I think she'd be great for this one in particular. Just like mad and sassy and i'm thinking it, it could go along the lines of something like killer bong where that's an exploitational movie as well but make it about a car and make it a car that is possessed by a dead black woman and it would be just so cool and awesome and just fun rip and uh, exploitational you'd have a really good job with oh, yeah. this movie could it be a famous dead black woman absolutely sure well, I mean, uh, you probably can't have a dead woman voice it, but you can try. No, no. It it would be like T- Tiffany Haddish doing a Tina Turner impression or something. You know? Sure, yeah. That would be good. To- oh, Tina Turner would be great, too, because I can imagine where you just – she just turn up the sound slowly until everyone's head in the car exploded yeah. on a high note. That'd be fun. That's still like – dude, that, yeah. that, would be a, that would be a rough pitch uh, <laughs> to, any, to any, like, executive anywhere. Oh, I thought you were making a pun. I'm sorry. Did I make a pun? Did I make an unintentional pun? A rough pitch about singing high notes too loud? Yeah, probably. Dang, could you, um, yeah, I, I meant to do that. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for picking up on my wit. <laughs> I like to keep it highbrow. <laughs> uh, that, that was less good than the last one, but you tried. I, it wasn't even a real It wasn't even a real pun. There was no connect. <laughs> What else? What else, you guys? You guys got what else? You guys got on this movie though? Let's let's steer let's steer it back to Blackula. Uh, y'all y'all remember we, Skillet? We no, no, no. We didn't talk right. about Skillet, dude. We did not talk Sk- about Skillet. We got to uh, talk about Skillet. You, why, don't you that, tell, why don't you tell us about Skillet? Skillet was this. Uh, he was a bit character on TV shows. His real name wasn't Skillet. I, I don't have his name on the top of my head, but the character's name is Skillet in Blackula, and he's the guy who shows up at the table and go. Who's that strange dude in the cape? And he looks. That is he, he, one strange dude. Yeah, that is one strange dude. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, where'd you get that cape from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to get that cape. He, he's like the one stereotypical black guy that's in every black exploitation film. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking too. Is like I can hear the words and I can think of it in this movie, but also it lets me think of a lot of other movies too. Yeah, what's he, that dude he, showing he just, up here with that cape and that cane and that whole and, and he, swagger that he's got he's walking the only, down the street? He he's the only in the club. Like we never see him outside of the club. He and, and when they go to the club, it's just the main characters talking to each other, and the skillet just shows up, and his name is Skillet. And... <laughs> in 1972, <laughs> Skillet. That's that, man. That's pretty progressive, dude. There were a lot more Skillets after Skillet. Than before Skillet. actually yeah the right. the movie that we're covering next week P- pd Weistra has a character named skillet uh who Which is was released it, after 1972 am i wrong yeah it, it was and, and, and it's an actually film. And, and actually it's a comedian named skillet who's in the movie and he plays himself uh yeah. oh nice yeah uh i, I know for a fact there's a actually DJ skillet right right no uh, anyway, yeah, so Skillet, he just shows up in a club, he shows up late, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, it's so fucked up. How did he show up late? What was he late for? I don't think he, that, that was I never mean, brought to he showed up later than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, okay, and, all right. And he, he, he comes up and he, he's just like, he's like, hey, what's happening, man? 
and, and he, he roasts Blackula on, on his cape, and he sits down, and he just starts pouring up the the drinks that that he didn't like throw down on. I don't know, man. He's a guy that I would like. I would drink with. I would drink with Skillet. Like, yeah, Skillet's, Skillet's like would, a cool dude. You would you drink with him because he would just start taking your drink. Like he was just yeah, start pouring. Well, he, he was never bottle. shown to be. He was never shown to be nefarious or, or ill willed in any sort of way. He was. A, he was no, just a genius. No, he, he offered to buy the cape, not take it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, but you know what? He did not offer to buy that bottle. He drank out of. <laughs> he just, <laughs> oh, they did make a point of of, of of that. Yeah, like, but you got to take a bottle for the table. It's skillet. Come on. He, he he probably wouldn't have shown up until they got the bottle. He was like, all right. That's why he uh, showed up late, man. <laughs> but dude, He's dude, that that's guy. So, <laughs> that's so skillet, though. See what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of him. That's his thing. Right. But, uh, he'll, he'll just uh yeah so that yeah that's speaking, of, speaking of drink speaking of drink orders did, did y'all did y'all notice what uh what king uh mama wude ordered uh, what, was that uh, like cognac like hennessy or something Nah, man, he got he got himself a Bloody Mary. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He did, he did. I want that to be my least favorite vampire joke that is made in almost every movie. <laughs> he did order. They order Bloody Mary. Mary. Is that a normal? I, I bet he, you know what. I bet he was very disappointed with how. <laughs> Your shit is this. I thought the waitress's there's, name was Mary. What the fuck? <laughs> there's no blood in this. Um... <laughs> And and how would he know what a bloody Mary is? He yeah, absolutely would not. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll there explain no it right now. Berries. Vampires, Bobby vampires Ray, are telepathic. Yeah. So they, vampires are telepathic. So they always have the collective knowledge of the world. There, I said it. Super, <laughs> super geniuses. Well, may, maybe, <laughs> just maybe, his first victim and all the other victims after he just sucked in his, like his knowledge of the oh, world. Oh, that's better better uh <laughs> eat your brains and gain your knowledge. That is a different movie, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely not this movie. There's no no uh no eat logic. your brains and gain your knowledge in, in this in this movie. <laughs> Yo, what? one of no one of those interior designers that had a few bloody marys right before he he got got. <laughs> he was like, he was like hey, hmm, this, this drink sounds pretty good. It's good. Into- oh my god, that's not you guys, what I thought it was at all. Do you, th- do you guys think this movie would have benefited from a traditional Transylvanian accent of the of Blackula? He was because <laughs> uh, I imagine that's how it, I'm sure that's that's actually closer to the original idea of this movie than what it turned into. Because the actor actually had a large say in, in trying to portray Blackula in a more respectful manner. Like, like he worked with the producers to create the whole backstory of this is an African king and he's, he's an honorable man. He was forced in this position. Uh, that, that was all uh, the, the actor. Ian, I think you, you named him earlier. I, for, I, I forget what his name was. Uh, uh, that's being of the stage. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, the actor. Yeah, the actor who played Blackula. Yeah, Arthur Miller. Uh, no, that's not his name. No, it's uh, William it? Marshall. I'm just saying things. William Marshall. I was close. Yeah, they were close. But but yeah, like he actually had a big part in uh, determining the because originally it was just going to be like Black Dracula. That was all their. That was all they had to go on the producers, you know. Yeah, and that was too long, so they had to shorten it up. I love the idea that someone is going to be like, "Hey, in web." Black Dracula, go. That, that's my direct. Black Dracula. Do a movie. Yeah. That's not that's not a movie. That's a that's two words together that I don't know what you want. So, so go. that make at it that good, point you watch go. you watch Hammer uh Dracula not movies. Not gonna make it good. Not I'm not gonna choose to make this good. I'm gonna make my own movie. It's gonna be Ian Webb's version of what is good for Black Dracula the movie. I do like to know that the uh, that the actor actually had some say in it though, because that's uh, that's one of those weird things that happened during the black exploitation genre is that you actually had uh, black directors and black actors able to have what they wanted go on screen, and that wasn't always good. But it was a a portion of history that is is interesting for sure. Well, it's not always 
black directors. Black actors, yes, but sometimes, mm-hmm. a lot of times, half the time, the director is white, and time. it's actually an exploitation film because they're like, it is literally that it's where like we're gonna take all this culture and we're gonna make money well, off of if, it. If, if, if you mm-hmm. think of it like, listen, if you think of it like that, then uh, you know Chuck Berry was playing ex, uh, exploitation music. You know what I mean? Like. The, the same things happen in the music industry and and and, yeah, and, and all our, you know uh, uh, that that's a common that's a common story. But what, uh, what's different is that if they put it in the name of the genre, you know what I mean? Yeah, which it gets de- it definitely gets a bad name for it because it, it makes you think of of like something specific, you know, which is the ex- exploiting black culture, which some movies do and some movies don't like. Uh, movies like um, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song, and like that, and uh, um, I'm having trouble thinking of some others. Penitentiary uh, and Dolomite specifically. I don't know, man. I, I have to separate the art from the people who who funded it or made money off of it, because not not the artist himself, but the people who funded it or made money off it. I'd never be able to watch another Miramax film otherwise. Uh, you know yeah, what I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying like, it's bad. I mean, I still love these films. The the, the black exploitations that's made by white directors, such as uh, like Foxy Brown and, and Coffee and uh, Shaft and Superfly in the back. Yeah, those, those, yeah, those are all great movies. The, they're great. Uh, yeah. and, and it's just. It, uh, yeah, and in fact, it got to the point where actually the um, Black Panthers threatened to they they put they put death threats out for the producers of the Mac, and um, oh really? Yeah, and, and they actually did murder a guy who's part of that movie. That there's uh, an actual real life pimp uh, who helped them. He he helped finance the film. And he offered protection in a lot of like the bad neighborhoods and stuff from like their uh, their equipment getting stolen, and then that guy ended up being murdered by uh, they think by the Black Panthers. Damn, dude, that's heavy. That's heavy as shit. We're getting yeah. we're getting into the weeds, Ian. You want to? You well, that's talk what about- happens on this show. <laughs> I call it the Trash Horror Movie Grand. We do that every episode. Uh, now can we, I will can say we, can we talk about the, the last like twenty minutes of this the movie. The director, yeah, just a minute. The director, William Kane or Crane of Blackula, I'm pretty sure he's white. Um, but uh, would would you all like to know what, what uh, movies he's done or TV shows, mostly TV shows? Oh, uh, he did. He he directed a few episodes of the Mod Squad. I know that he did that. He did old, old favorite of mine. Uh, yeah, he did Mud Squad. That was the first thing. Then he did Blackula. Then he did a few episodes of Starsky and Hutch. Never heard of it. Bullshit. And then... You don't know the Mod Squad? <laughs> and then he did a few episodes. He did 146 episodes of The Dukes of Hazard. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy who directed Dukes of Hazard directed Blackula. That's the one I never thought of. The uh, <laughs> Blackula meets the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I feel like. I do you feel think like... you turn into a bat over the jump, or do you not think you turn into a bat over the jump? <laughs> I don't, man. I no. Nope. You know what bat. that would turn. You know what that would turn into. You ever hear the song that? Uh, that ice ice cube did with uh i think it was like brad paisley uh yeah yeah well yeah okay (laughs) moving on um (laughs) so you want to talk about the last like 10 minutes or so okay yeah yeah the way the way it ends so the police are searching for vampires they've been convinced now they finally they had to bring vampires everywhere to show people that they were real they couldn't talk them into it Police are searching for uh, for vampires. They're uh, uh, they end up in like some plant, some facility, right? Uh, 
and Tina gets like shot somehow, or she's like dying. So to save her life, uh, Blackula's got to turn her into a vampire, right? Yeah. Turns turns her into a vampire. I guess he mm-hmm. gives her he's like take a nap and like puts her in a coffin. And then he's over here killing cops and stuff. Good scenes. Uh, there's a scene where he's throwing a barrel over a, over a staircase and hitting people. There's a lot of good like stuntman work where they're rolling down stairs and stuff over each other, right? But then, mm-hmm. uh, but then you know the, the big twist at the end. The, the guy comes up to kill what he thinks is Blackula, but it's actually Tina. And then he's about to pull the cross on on Blackula to be like, "Yo, stay away from me." Blackula goes, "There's no need for that." I'm going to go fucking kill myself on the roof. Yeah. You know, he doesn't say it outright, but he's just like, there's no need for that. And they're like, okay, I'll put it away. Then if you say so, turns around, walks up to the roof. Uh, funny enough sign as he's walking up says no smoking. Guess who's going to be smoking in about 20 seconds. Blackula. Cause he's, cause the sun's already risen. Those, and, those and you know that, I didn't get enough of that during that. That movie. was it's so just... completely not on purpose. <laughs> it was, um, and then okay, and then they That'd cut to the sun. <laughs> so he starts burning. They cut to the sun. They cut back. Maggots, living maggots, all up in his eyes and stuff. Where'd uh, the maggots that, come that from? That was popular in the seventies. But just like instant maggots, though. Like usually, it's like an old dead <laughs> body you find. Been there for a day or two, and and that's enough time for eight flies to lay eggs and larvae to hatch. Has, but it, hasn't he been maggots? dead for two hundred years, and he has so, instant regeneration capacity? So how long has those lab- maggots been finding? Living generations. It's probably like the twentieth generation inside of his body, right? Twentieth. Is that how vampires work? Was Edward from uh, uh, from fucking Twilight full of maggots? That's what I assume. <laughs> yes. Is yes, yeah, Brad, <laughs> like the fucking uh, yes. man from Twilight. Yes. Or whatever. Yes. That's crazy, dude. You broke. You, I, I think, refuse I you just... to move on this. I believe that that's how it works. Yes. I think you just blew the lid off this, Daniel. To be honest with you. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Damn. Vampires. Start thinking about it that way. You see a beautiful vampire. He's got maggots under his everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. I mean, every, I mean, that's why I was so squirmy. You know? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. All right. Well, yeah. uh, that, at this point, we, we usually go into the prompt, which we already pretty much covered with the the Dracula and other or vampires and other movies. Sorry. I had to I had to jump the gun on that. Oh one. no, no, that's fine. Know. It was it was I fun. needed to know. Um, <laughs> unless either of y'all have any other ideas of uh, any well, other for, pitches. W- one thing one thing I'd be uh, remiss if I if I forgot to include is the the excellent intro uh artwork. It's like a stop motion 2D animation, right? And and uh, it's accompanied by a very very well done funk song, as 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 we talked about uh-huh. uh, earlier. But yeah, yeah. If you get a chance, if you don't want to watch this movie for some reason. If you watch this whole podcast, you made it this far, and you don't want to watch Blackula, just watch that <laughs> intro part because it's yeah. it's just by itself is totally totally good. Just the 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 artwork to be appreciated for what it is. Also, please, if you don't want to watch this movie and you've made it this far, please leave a comment down below. I want to hear what you have to say about this. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you and why are you still watching? Like, Don't I listen just, to Daniel. Maybe... You're perfect. You're perfect in every way you are. Keep watching. I'm, I'm, I just want to know. I just want to know. Like, but also, let, let, let us know, know um, what vampires you'd like to see remade into a classic movie. Um, now, uh, let's rate it. Uh, and Daniel, we'll start with you. All right, great. So we start with production value, correct? Yes. All right, so uh, oh, product production value is low. Um, yes, I'm gonna is. I'm gonna have to give it a uh, five out of ten. Uh, bad transition scenes that I, I I like less than literally shouting the word "bat" and flying off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. That's uh, good. What do you have for enjoyment? 
I don't think that this is for everybody. So as much as I enjoy it, this isn't a movie that I'm going to be bringing to most audiences. Um, I have an audience for that. I do live in Florida. Uh, it's fine <laughs> to bring up these things sometimes. And I will regret it sometimes. Uh, I don't know that you want to find out people's ideas on race or um, exploitational things. And, and, and other times I think I don't really want to piss somebody off that may be a little more sensitive to this. I do not believe this is a sensitive movie. So as much as I love it, I can only give it a seven. Uh, I, I'm going to give it uh, seven times in which you name somebody something that you can't repeat in public like Blackula. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. And uh, Ian, what's the first uh, production value? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give this. I'll be a little more generous than Daniel. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. And Damn, I don't really think it's that good. It only gets a six because of the the audio quality during the live <laughs> performances. Oh. During the live performances, the audio mixing between that point that leave the <laughs> left a lot to be desired. Okay. Um. Visually, uh, I think they did a lot with what their budget offered. Um, yeah, the deaths weren't, you know, greatly memorable. But you know, remember this is prior to the, uh, you know, the big slasher boom of the late seventies and early eighties. So death scenes weren't that crazy to begin with, anyway. But it, you know, it was more about the psychological thrilling aspect. Uh, what's 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 the second one? Uh, enjoyability. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that, Daniel. This is a you got to introduce this to the right person because it yeah. can go the wrong way on in two directions. And yep. but in, in some sense, it's kind of a good litmus test for your friends to be like, "Hey, how do you feel about Blackula?" And if they if they start going down a weird rabbit hole, go, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. we don't have to. And we don't, in, have, we don't have to be friends too. anymore. Yeah, you know, but 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 in the opposite, yeah, you could offend somebody. Yeah, you know, and, and that just, mean... just with the word black exploitation. Shut up. We all completely under. You muted me. Okay. All right. So we, we all completely understand, I, I thought, but maybe not. Yeah. But uh yeah, so so yeah, for enjoyability, shit. It does First, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna rate it on my own enjoyability, not not to show yeah, that's the person. point. Person. Yeah. Fucking how much do you enjoy it? I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an eight. I kind of got a little bored to have like towards the end. Um, I, I had to go Eight back what? and watch the last twenty minutes, but Eight what? Yeah, what's what, what was the last uh, category? No, no, no. But Enjoy eight. Uh, eight what? Eight out of ten. What? What are you oh. rating it? Eight out. Eight out of ten. Fabulous interior designers. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, that was cool. Yeah. yeah Love to see 10 of those guys. At, or even 8. And they were great okay. already. Hey, hey, if 8 out of 10 were down, come on. That's good odds. <laughs> come on. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, production, I, I think it's low. Very low. Um, but you, you, may, you brought up a good point that they did well with the budget that they had. Uh, they made over a million dollars, Ian. Yeah. Um, I haven't made a million dollars yet on any of my endeavors, so nope. you know, shame on me. Is yep. low. Um, and the script is kind of it's kind of shitty. Uh, so um, I will give it five Bloody Marys. Um, as far as enjoy it. Enjoyment factor, I loved it. I thought it was very entertaining. It was a lot of fun. Um, it did get kind of slow later on, but mostly it was, it, it was a lot of fun to make fun of uh, by like how bad the script was and how much none of it made sense whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I, I really, I really enjoyed making fun of it. Uh, so uh, I'll give it uh, eight Leroy's. And that is it for this episode of Cold Trash Horror Movie Grind. Next week, we're going to remain in the black exploitation genre um, with uh, a movie that's kind of horror, not in, in the sense that Blackula is, but uh, 
uh, it, it's uh, it's called Petey Weistra, the Devil's Son-in-Law. We've got to make it. Let's get out of here. Yep. Uh, it is uh, a Dolomite film. Uh, basically, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, you got um, Rudy Ray Moore. He did a bunch of Dolomite films. And then he did this one where, the uh, Ian, you you haven't seen this, have you? I've not seen Petey Wheatstraw, no, just the, just the trailer. Well, why don't you tell us what it is based on the title? <sighs> well... Pete was born in a small town in southern Georgia. Made his way up to New York in the late 70s. Uh, got got in a little trouble with the wrong crowd, with the wrong people. Uh, but, you know, throughout, throughout it all, he maintained a heart of gold. Uh, uh, now he's being faced with the biggest challenge of his life at, 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 at a pivotal turning point that uh, uh, really set the stage for the rest of his his existence. And... and it all ends in a in a uh, climactic uh, experience. That's pretty much what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you completely left out the double son-in-law part, but uh, oh yeah, was that? I, I just thought it's called it's called it's what is what's it called? It's called this. <laughs> Go and get tickets to Leroy and Skilly. If you're damn record, I think we need to go. What, Petey? Are you crazy? Don't you know what they'll do to you? I'm going to give them an opening that they will never forget. Damn right. <laughs> oh, the devil's son. Okay, I see it now. The devil's son-in-law. So he married the devil's daughter. Hey, <laughs> Then we all. <laughs> uh, Daniel, why don't you tell us what that movie's about based on the title? I, I, honestly, based on the title, not what I thought the movie was about. Uh, when I when I watched the movie, I enjoyed it. Oh, uh, you bit, actually but, uh, just you? Yes, that? I've watched that. One. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Ed. Yeah. No, if I'm gonna. Let's just go with the idea that uh, we, we are going to have to name the movie uh, based on the title. Uh, Petey Wheatstraw, The Devil's Son-in-Law. I I would have actually assumed it was a gambling movie or maybe a gunslinger movie, maybe a combination of both where it's like an old school gangster. Uh, kind of is. It kind of is. Kind of. Uh, I would not have assumed actual devil. Uh, here's where the horror part comes in, I guess. But um, I would have assumed that Petey Wheatstraw was just really, really, really good at what he does. So he has to um, keep winning cards after he gets too much money and they, the casino decides to go after him. He's got to, you know, start shooting people in order to keep the money that he rightfully won without cheating, uh, based on the fact they assumed he was cheating because he was black. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the black exploitation genre at a different level that they assumed he was cheating back in the seventies since he was too lucky. All right. Uh what what it's actually about is uh he's a stand up comedian who gets murdered and then uh the devil lets decides to let him like come back to life for living and give him a magical pimp cane. If only on the condition that he marries the devil's daughter, and I assume she must be beautiful, correct? She is not, <laughs> and so he tries to skip out on the deal with the, with the devil's pimp cane. Hey man, and hey man, hey man. She she might not she might not be beautiful, but the sex is fire. <laughs> I get it. All right, well that's uh, next week's episode. P.D. Weistra, the devil's son-in-law. Um, what what do you guys got going on? Anything? Any new projects no. or anything? Nothing. Well, uh, I I got a I got a new new something. Uh, it's going to be coming out probably a couple weeks from now. A little little after Thanksgiving. Uh, 
if you're in, if you're into biopics or movies about uh movies about musicians, right, or music in general, uh, then then you may be interested to check out the first episode, the pilot of uh of movies about music, right, where where we take a deep dive into the story behind the story and find out about uh about not only the 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 movie itself, but the but the the character therein. Uh, the first episode is going to be with uh, our our gracious host here, Ian Webb. And, yes, uh, and we we will be covering La Bamba, the one of the greatest movies of all time, starring Looking Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, God, I got I got a lot to get into. Let's say I got a lot to say. Okay, so if you want to if you want to see some uh, some folks talking about uh, movies about music. Stick around. Search movies about music on YouTube. It's gonna be uh just after the Thanksgiving holiday. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um and uh also looking forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. So uh yeah, keep keep us posted. What once once you got it going, what we'll uh plug it more on here. Uh that's movies about music. Not up yet, but it will be. And uh for uh the um uh, Notice you all, uh, I will plant you now and dig you later. Uh, take it easy. Shut up. Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. <laughs>